While I was growing up with titles like Mario and Pokemon, I'm sure you'd be pretty surprised to know that the Disguise series stands quite a bit higher than those to me. As someone who's played all the games and has really enjoyed the series ever since a very young age, I constantly talk about the games with friends and fans of the channel and they ask me, why should you play this guy or why is it worth playing and seeing as i've played this game like over a dozen times and i plan to replay it yet again for almost like the fourth or fifth year straight of course i recorded it all so i'm going to be telling you guys exactly that why you should play disgaea one and at least give this game a chance and then maybe move on to the other ones remember to like the video comment subscribe all that stuff helps out the channel and helps me want to make more videos now there are going to be a few minor spoilers but i'm not going to try and include anything heavy story wise but before that let's talk about how you can actually play the game since disgaea one is a pretty old game dating back all the way to 2003 north america for the ps2 there's a lot of different versions of the game out even though the game is like just about as young as i am it still holds up graphically and mechanically i'd say in most of these versions other than the ps2 game though you have a pc port on steam which is a very good bet it goes on sale for about four bucks so it's an absolute steal and it's probably your easiest way to try out the game other than that you do have versions on platforms like the psp the Nintendo DS, you even got a mobile version now that has the complete remastered game. I'll be using gameplay from the remastered version, which I captured on my Nintendo Switch. Honestly, Disgaea 1 Complete, it's pretty cool. I like it quite a bit. For a remastered version, it holds up all right. There are a few things that I don't like about it, like how they swap certain character sprites out with newer ones. But all in all, if it's your first time getting into the series, just go for the PC version, try and look for that when it goes on sale, or even just picking it up normally, it's still pretty cheap. Now, once you do start the game you can maybe end up spending you know anywhere from like 20 to 30 hours if you just complete the game to maybe 200 to upwards of a thousand hours if you really get invested and into it so let's talk about the gameplay it's a turn-based game so it's kind of a little bit like chess with you controlling different characters from the home portal these characters have different classes like fighter or mage or different stats that go with them and different weapons that they use. You'll find yourself discovering and unlocking a whole bunch of new classes and characters throughout the story. Not only generic ones that you can create, but also ones from the storyline that you meet along the way. And Disgaea has a lot to offer other than just the gameplay. With a story as well being one of my favorites out of like any SRPG, you begin the game with a bunch of gang violence going on in your bedroom. Wake up! Like, this guy is the fucking overlord. He is who owns the netherworld or whatever. He sounds like he lives in an actual trap house. So essentially, after the waking from a three-year slumber, Laharo learns that his father is dead, and it's up to him to take claim to the throne and become the ruler of overlord. Ruler of a netherworld. Fuck. Other than that, the story does try and show all these characters as much as it can to kind of give you more personality and insight on these characters. That way, by the end of a story, you are really attached to these characters. You've seen them in lots of cutscenes, you've battled with them, leveled them up and everything. Say even in the tutorials of these games, you get a very basic tutorial that'll give you what you need to know about the game, which is pretty straightforward. Along with that, the cutscenes that do accompany them to lead you into it actually kind of flow with the tutorial and story on average there's about four to six maps or levels per chapter and there's a bunch of chapters in the game to go through during all these levels too in between them you're gonna have different story cutscenes or points in the story that lead up to the next map the game has a perfect dark and comedic personality making a world about a bunch of monsters and demons seem like not scary at all meeting the boss of the first chapter is one of the best moments too this guy just gets completely like clowned on immediately when we find him you're just a tiny stepping stone on my path to the throne <gasps> how dare you i am the dark adonis my... who gives a damn about you your new name is mid boss mid, mid, mid boss looks like you hurt his pride prince if you beat him the game just renames him to mid boss and he's clowned on constantly but if you end up losing to him you unlock an alternative bad ending so an early ending to the game causing you to restart with your party except you keep all your level and stats there's a bunch of different like alternative endings and ways to make the game end in different ways in disgaea games which make it have a lot of different replay value just going for the different endings makes it very worthwhile replaying the game but there's a whole a lot of different secret stuff in the game that makes it worthwhile say like even after you see etna kind of foreshadowing the story 
Now, if you end up clicking three different switches in the hub world, you can actually go to a spot which is Etna's closet. And in here, every single chapter will be like a new story dialogue that'll be added about Etna, what she thinks, and how it relates to the story. The story of a game basically progresses like that. You'll meet different characters in the game. Some you'll beat and keep as rivals. Others you'll beat and they'll join your party. There's enough of these moments that don't really make it feel like overwhelming. Like by the end of a game, you're gonna know most of the characters. There's not just an overabundance amount of story characters to really know at least of a main story. Although if you don't even wanna use the story characters, just feel free to go to the Dark Assembly, create your own characters. You can have a team of whatever the fuck you want. Half monsters, half humans you can have a team of healers just a full team of printies for whatever reason you can basically level up or make whoever you want your mvp or spread out your levels it's all up to you on how you want to actually play the game if a part of a story does become too difficult or someone say lagging behind in levels you can just go to a certain level that has really good xp spots or you know certain bonuses they put in just to make grinding easier and you have plenty of time to get attached to these characters and start to love them as you level them up and get them more powerful to go through the story as on average it'll probably take you around 30 to 40 hours to complete your first campaign playthrough but that's not all there's way more there's something called the post game in Disgaea, which is by far the biggest post game I've seen in like any single player game. To begin, the post game will carry over all your stats and items with you over to a brand new playthrough. Along with that, you're going to have a chance to unlock a lot of different characters. If you have a complete version, just to name a couple, say you get the main characters, Adele and Rosalind, who are the protagonists of Disgaea 2. If you end up beating them in battle, then they join your party and you can use them in Disgaea 1 however you please. You'll get to see bonus cutscenes as well as different interactions with different characters in the universe, which go on to be in other games as well. On top of this, you have Disgaea's ultimate overlord, Bao. This guy is ridiculous. When you first see him, his stats are in the millions. You think there's no way in how can hell you're gonna beat this guy. But with a little bit of grinding, some serious forehead strategies, and a lot of work, you're gonna be able to pull off a va a fucking vow. You're gonna be able to pull off a bow victory. A bow victory is one of the finest. It's up there with winning an XCOM 2 playthrough. For Disgaea 1, there's a lot of post-game content in the newer versions or the newer ports. The only problem is that, say, the PS2 version has the least amount of content, seeing as that was the first game to, like, spark up the whole series, basically. But other than that, there's something I really do want to talk about, and it's the item world. This is probably the main appeal of Disgaea, and I've been saving it for this part because of that. Of course, leveling your characters and getting their stats up is all good, but what about leveling your items? Well, by jumping well by jumping into dungeons or floors and clearing waves of enemies, you have a chance to actually boost your item stats. That means that whatever character you put it on, they're going to have a lot more stats. I'm talking, you can literally make a character go from just recruited useless to just about unbeatable if you have the best items in the game all maxed out. There's a lot of different random factors in play, such as the different mobs that are going to spawn, what you're going to get for bonuses and sort of random events, how the geo panels are going to be laid out, so are you going to get XP bonuses, or are you going to get fuck over bonuses item world is by far one of my favorite parts of the disguise games along with that you also have the innocence that are sort of like bonus stats they have different names like gladiator is for attack uh, statistician is for experience percentage and by getting these guys subdued or to like a yellow smiley face you can combine them with others of the same name that way you can have like a bunch of gladiator stats into an item to increase its attack even more. Or you can have a bunch of statisticians in your items, that way your characters get experience up to like 20 times. I'm talking 2,000 percent xp gains absolutely nuts and one of my favorite parts is just about how fast you can go in the item world you know these games are kind of made to be played at your speed if you want to play it at a slow strategic speed go ahead if you want to play it at a fast speed with all the animations disabled or all the animations sped up then that's fine too. In the item world, it's perfect. Just be able to clear these floors within a minute or half a minute every time and just make your way through to getting your item all the way to god static levels. So while the item world can be a little bit complicated for the very first time you look at it, 
trust me after a few runs in it you're gonna start figuring it out and it'll probably become one of your favorite parts about this game just because of how much it lets you customize your characters and your party just with your equipment as well like i said this game's by far one of my favorites of all time as i've played through it around a dozen times since i was a little kid and honestly it's kind of similar to minecraft i think i've bought in the game more than minecraft i bought it on almost every console whenever it's come out to play it again and again and it remains to be one of those games that very high my recommendation list to put it in the best terms you know games like mario have immortalized say like the mario sprite or the yoshi sprite and all those characters and i sort of see and feel the same way with all the disguise games since they've been around for just about as long as i have it's been very fun just seeing these characters all the new ones all the old ones it just gives you a lot of reasons to get into the series especially when you go on to the other games if you get into the post games of those you get to see the characters from the old games that you played with it's just really cool not to mention the disgaea 1 ost is by far one of the most underrated osts ever like this ost slaps so hard you got amazing different soundtracks for when you're in the hub world when you're going into the shop you know, the item world has its own thing. Different bosses have their own different themes. It really sets the tone and mood for every battle, every cutscene, and every moment of the game. Seeing as this is the game that sort of laid the groundwork for what would become a series of games, I definitely do recommend you check it out if you're interested in the series at all. At the same time, I feel very highly about Disgaea 2, so if you might want a little bit more content, i maybe go for Disgaea 2, but either way, I think Disgaea 1 is a must-play game at all costs. With the sixth game coming out in the summer, I'm really hyped for that one, so I've been replaying a lot of older ones, so expect more videos on those to come to the channel. I want to have some more specific videos on Disgaea 1 coming out soon, but I feel like this was a good video to start with on just for all the new people or people who might see Disgaea 1 and think about getting it. I really recommend it like 10 out of 10. Honestly, I like the game enough that I probably could have made this video as long as I did for the video I made on Makai Kingdom, but it was definitely better just to make a shorter video for this topic. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow me on my other social medias if you want to stay up to tune with what I'm doing and the type of videos I'm doing. I got a lot of stuff coming to the channel, new stuff in the works all the time, you know, working on scripts, vlogs, all that. Either way, thank you for checking out the video and checking out one of the first games I ever played probably around 2005 when i was like three or four maybe 2006 so bless up for sharing the experience thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace